all right we are back for another round of diys and i am just as excited about these This go round, I'm focusing on wall decor. So each DIY you should be able to hang on your wall. I will be sure to link sources of where I got the ideas for these DIYs and all of the products that I use down in the description box. <laughs> description box. Please be sure to follow me on Instagram if you want more behind the scenes. And if you like the content that you see here on this channel, please be sure to hit subscribe and ring the bell notification. So let's get into those DIYs. Okay, this time around we are working with some air dry clay. I laid parchment paper down to work on top of, but I think um, some type of mat might have worked better. I didn't have a rolling pin, so I used a wine bottle that I covered in plastic, and then I just got grabbed a couple of glasses to use um, to cut out my pieces of clay. Uh, I did have some water and a sponge ha handy as a type of to create a slip, but that actually didn't really work for me. So for this first DIY I'm creating one of those like circular wall hangings so I just took the clay warmed it up a little bit in my hands uh, you didn't really see me roll it out at first but I do get it rolled out on that parchment paper wax paper might also work better I did find that brushing the clay with a little bit of water created a nicer cut when I used my jars I also figured out that cups something that had a thinner rim works better when trying to cut the circles out of the clay. And I didn't uh, have exactly a template or anything that I was following. I just kind of made this up with like different size circles. One thing that I think I did forget to show is that although the slip did not really work for me for smoothing out the top, um, the tops or the bottoms of my pieces, it did help to make the edges nice and smooth. So I don't think we show um, that, but it did work. Now, if I had to do this again, I would probably just go buy a rolling pin. I'm not a baker, so I don't have one on hand, uh, but the wine bottle did work. And like, a, this is where I think just a mat might work better than the paper. Um, because it was sticking to the plastic that I put around the wine bottle. So this jar did not work as well for me as something with a thinner rim. This was, it was really, uh, I also hadn't put any water on here. So I just went back in and used a thinner rim glass and cut that out again. Now for my larger circle, I end up using this um, wide open um, mug that I have. Because the rim is so thick, it really didn't give me a great cut, you'll see. So I did go around this and trim off some of the extra clay with um, an X-Acto knife. And then, like I said, I didn't show on camera, but I did use the water and just my finger to smooth out the edges around, uh, like the edges around the circle that did help to make the, the circles a bit smoother. This, this foam brush that I, when I watched other YouTube videos, this didn't really work for me. The slip did not work to create a smooth surface. I still ended up with some texture, um, but in the end I thought it was fine because it just made it look a little more handcrafted to me. <laughs> uh, and then I did just cut one in half cut it out like cut out um, a half circle shape out of the half just trying to create some variation in um, the hanging that I was creating excuse my manicure this is immediately after the other DIY video that if you haven't seen I will be sure to link here and down in the description 
but the hand, the dye from that other DIY video really did a number <laughs> on my manicure. Uh, and this is right after that, so please excuse my nails. The X-Acto knife worked, but it wasn't perfect. I wonder if um, some actual tools meant for clay use would be better. But again, I was okay with everything not being 100% perfect because that is what makes it look handmade and I wanted that. So here I'm just using some toothpicks to put holes in everything so that I can string them all together once they are dry. I did, I was sure to make sizable holes because I didn't want any issues um, later when trying to string it together because I wasn't sure what type of string I was going to use. So I did sizable holes. And I didn't really measure this, just kind of, you know, went for it. Again, I'm okay with the handmade, handmade um, kind of finish that this is going to have. So I just added some lines to it to just create some texture, nothing crazy. Uh, and then I wanted to add tassels to the end and I used this piece to just do three holes that I plan to add tassels to um, at the end. But I did make a mistake here and I'm interested if you're, as you're watching this, do you notice the mistake that I made? I'll point it out and give you a fix for it later. But here are all of my pieces um, as I set them to dry. And I left them to dry for a couple of days actually. They were pretty dry after two days, but I probably waited about a week um, in between um, filming, like filming this part and actually stringing them together. There was probably about a week's worth of time. So once they were fully dry and I just left them in my living room, um, there were just a few edges that were a little that were still a little jagged so I just used a piece of um, sandpaper to smooth those out a bit and you can see it still has a very handmade quality this is just me deciding how I'm going to string them together and just flipping them over so I make sure I tie all of my knots on the right side I'm just using some twine that I had left over laying around nothing special that I'm just Threading through all of my holes and because I made my holes nice and large, this was very easy. And just tying them all up. Now to do the tassels, I did use a different texture of twine. This is just, it has a bit more of a rustic vibe and it's a little thicker. And I just wrapped it around my hand about 15 or 16 times. Tied it, um, took the original twine that I used to tie everything together and used that to tie them off across the top, tie them off across the middle so that you get that little octopus kind of head with the tentacle vibe. And then I used that same twine to attach them to um, my piece here. This was very easy. And because that twine, the twine I used for the tassels, because it's a little bit thicker, it was easier to get that kind of um, tassel feel. And I liked the mix of textures on um, with the clay, like that different kind of tassel 
the different kind of um, twine texture. So I did all three tassels, attached them all to my last piece. And this is when I realized that I had made a mistake as I went to add it to the rest of the hanging. I realized that I did not put a hole in the top of this one. I did a hole for the three tassels, but no hole to attach it. <laughs> um, but luckily, I used a screw that had a very pointy end and a screwdriver and was very careful and slow, went a little bit on the front side, went a little bit on the back side until the hole was large enough for me to put um, my piece of twine through. And it worked perfectly. Nothing cracked, nothing broke. So there is a hack for you if you forget to make holes or, or if you need your holes to be a little bit bigger or you just want to add holes at the end. You can use a piece of twine, uh, use a screw that has a very pointy end, tapered. I think the word is, is tapered, a tapered end and go slowly. And then I just added that final piece onto my hanging and adding a loop, added a loop at the top to hang it and it's all done. And I didn't paint this piece because I thought it looked really cool in the like off white against the black wall. And like I said, I really like the mix of textures um, of the clay, the twine that I used to attach everything and then the twine that I used for the hanging, for the tassels. This was really easy, um, fairly inexpensive, uh, something I would definitely do again. So for this next project, I'm using a bit more air dry clay. And this time I am creating a knot that I am going to hang a tassel from. I thought when I saw this uh, on hunkerhome.com, which is where I found this DIY, I thought it looked so elegant. <laughs> so I wanted to give it a try. It turned out to be a little bit harder than I thought. So I am following the instructions from the website, which I will be sure to link below in the description box. But it called for making two ovals, which it took me a little trial and error to get those ovals, to those two ends to stay closed. But in the end, I found that overlapping them and then scoring them with the X-Acto knife and then smoothing with water was what worked best, but it did take me a couple of tries to get there. Also, perfection isn't really the name of the game with this, at least it wasn't for me. Um, I probably haven't worked with clay like this since you know I was a child playing with Play-Doh, but it was fun to give it a shot. Sean was very involved in this one as well too. You'll see him stick his head in later. So after I created my two ovals is when we tried to get to the not creating part, which really wasn't that hard, but for some reason just felt really hard. <laughs> Um, I consider myself a very visual learner, but mm -mm. the first go round just didn't work out. Um, I was like oval number one over oval number two and then pull it through. Like I was just having the hardest time and you can see Sean is in there trying to help me as well. We're both looking at the computer like, what? This, what is it trying to tell us? So we tried again and just slowed down. And in the end, it didn't look exactly like the photo from the website, um, but it was close enough. I think if you're gonna try this, it would help to make one oval a little bit smaller than the other, is what I think we came to the conclusion in the end. Um, but yeah, we just, played with it a little bit, pinched it more here, rounded it out more there, just trying to make it look a little more like the photo. But perfection does not have to be the name of the game. This is something that will obviously look handmade and that's fine. So I did smooth this one out with water quite a bit, still not having the best of luck with the slip, um, which you'll kind of see um, once I'm done fiddling with it. 
So this piece I did end up painting because it just didn't have the best finish on it. In the instructions on the website, they actually used a black air dry clay, which might work uh, better for how much you're manipulating it. Um, but I just ended up painting mine. I wasn't gonna buy two types of air dry clay for these DIYs, okay? So lots of smoothing. I don't know why that sounded like Alexa, but lots of smoothing and fiddling. And uh, so here it is finished. And you can see it ha it's still very textured. And that texture was really still there when it dried as well. So I set this to dry. I did these at the exact same time as the kind of moon phases circle thing. So they dried about the same amount of time. But again, after two days, this was pretty dry. And I just took some leftover black wall paint um, and a sponge brush and gave it about two coats of paint. And I think the sponge brush really helped in being able to fill in any indentations where the, the clay wasn't very smooth. It really allowed me to get the paint in there so that it would hide some of those uh, imperfections in the, in the clay. And this is great if you just have some paint, you know, laying around that you haven't used yet. Great use of some leftover paint. Creating a cute little wall hanging. So I did, like I said, about two coats of that, making sure that most of the white was covered, like when I would look at it to hang on the wall, making sure most of the white was covered. And then it was time to add the tassel. So again, I was just trying to use things that I had on hand. So this is um, macrame rope that I thought about using, but then I figure I wanted something that had just a little more texture, if that makes sense, because the way that um, the macrame is just around the spool, it will hang pretty straight. And the way that this uh, other twine is um, rolled, it would have just a little more texture in the actual string. I did think about brushing it out um, but in the end, I didn't think it was necessary. So I did one tassel and it felt a little skinny. You know, I was like, mm -mm, it needs more. So I doubled up, <laughs> made another one and then tied them together. And on this one, I used all the same twine for each element of the tassel. And I did want the tassel to be kind of long. It's long in the photo from Hunker Home where I got this idea. So I did leave it kind of long, but you can see that it just, the string has a little more, a little more texture. So although I was a bit concerned about the knot, <laughs> if I'm completely honest, when I was done creating it at first, by the end when it was hanging on the wall, I actually thought it looked pretty elegant. I was pleasantly surprised with how nice it looked in the end. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think down in the description. Um, what you uh, not down in the description down in the comments what did you guys think of this knot um, I thought the black against the black also really really made it look very elegant yeah the tassel the contrast I actually I liked it in the end not perfect but still interesting home decor that I made myself Okay, this last one is my favorite. <laughs> so you're going to need some raffia. I got some that came in these bunches. These are some cowl shells uh, and a dinner plate and some cardboard. And we're creating basically like a juju hat kinda-ish. But I saw this 
in someone else's video on YouTube and I will be sure to link that video down below. And I thought it was great and I just had to give it a try. She made it look so easy. So I just cut out a circle on my cardboard from my dinner plate and then I'm basically just going to hot glue the raffia to this. Um, kind of like in a sunburst kind of kind of vibe which y'all it's messy <laughs> it's messy and you're going to have raffia ribbon everywhere and yeah also something that I learned part way through cut an extra piece of cardboard to use to cover or to safely press down on the raffia and the hot glue uh, to protect your hands because the raffia is kind of thin and you're really just kind of like going for it that hot glue will get your fingers and it's hot so learn from my mistakes if you try this which you absolutely should because it's really very easy and the results are so cute so i'm just taking some of my raffia and I'm really just gonna glue this all around the circle. Tons of glue, just go for it. Um, in the video that I watched, she made it look so easy, and it really was, but it does take a little um, going back and filling in the sparse areas. Cause you're gonna glue it down, you're, it's gonna look full, and then you're gonna pick it up and you're gonna notice little bald spots. But just go for it, there's no, I really don't think there's a wrong way to do this. Just tons of hot glue. Make sure you have tons of hot glue. And like I said, make something to protect your hands so that you can, without abandon, press the raffia down um, into the glue. One thing I did do as I went along is um, kind of shuffle the raffia around in the bundle because it's folded in that like pattern. Um, I just kind of, you know, shuffled up the raffia up in my hands just to um, vary the, the folds. And you're just gonna go around and around and around and around the circle until you've filled the entire thing in pick it up look for any sparse areas fill that in <laughs> do that over and over and over again until everything looks full I don't remember exactly how many bundles came in this raffia. Uh, I will link all of the products that I used, the exact products down in the description. But however many bundles came in the raffia, I used all of it. <laughs> Just trying to make sure that there were no um, sparse areas. So, just keep gluing. Lots and lots of glue. You cannot go wrong. And then once you have your raffia complete, you're going to take a salad plate and cut a salad plate size cardboard circle that you're going to glue on top of this so that we can create our innards with um, our shells. And even when it comes to gluing the salad plate, go for it. Like go for the glue because this is going to keep everything in place and create the bed that you're going to glue your shells to. So after I put the salad plate down, I did give it an initial haircut. Um, just so that it, I could kind of see what we were working with. 
Uh, in the end, I think I actually could have trimmed it just a little bit more. Um, but once I got it on the wall, I actually really like the way it looked. It could be just a little bit uh, shorter, but I think that that's up to you. So now I'm going to go in with those cowl shells and I am just gluing them down all around the perimeter and you're just going to keep working from the outside in. Um, this part is a little bit tedious. Sean did step in to help me and it took the two of us, I would say maybe about an hour to do it. So it might take you a little bit longer if you do it alone, uh, hour and 45 maybe, but totally worth it and not hard at all. Tedious, but not difficult. So we're just laying down a row of glue. Um, we did start the second row kind of standing straight up and I was like, we will have these things standing straight up <laughs> all the way to the middle and it won't kind of look right. So be sure that you're laying them, like recline the shells on top of each other so that you have enough room to finish the circle as you come closer to the to the middle if that makes sense so don't have them laying standing straight up at attention have them reclining and yeah we just around and around and around and the shell stuck in the glue very well and like i said not hard but a little tedious but also very satisfying so when we get to the end we just fill the middle with some glue stuck those last shells in and we were done. I did let this dry um, for about a day or so before I tried to hang it up um, to make sure all of the hot glue was dry and that everything was going to stick. And then to hang it, I just took a piece of raffia, the thicker raffia that I use to make the tassels on the circle hanging and just added a ton of hot glue to the back um, with that and that is how I hung it because it actually is fairly light. It's just cardboard, raffia and some shells. But this was so cute. It was so cute and so easy. Could not go wrong. And here she is. I just love this so much. It's not a, a um, dupe for a juju hat, but it does have that same kind of vibe. And especially on this little hallway that we painted here, if you want to see the video of this space, I'll link it here and down in the description. But I loved it with our fun, colorful art on this wall. I thought it was the perfect addition and it's covering up our breaker box. <laughs> Yeah, I love this one. This is my favorite, I think, of the three wall hangings in this video. So be sure to tell me which one you guys like the most. So what did you guys think? I really like them. I think that that last one with the shells, like the juju hat kind of vibe was my favorite, but please be sure to let me know which one you guys liked most down in the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.